Hey everybody, welcome to The Green Room. This is a place that we have created to have further conversations around our Sunday messages. And I'm super pumped about today because we have Pastor Rob and Pastor Ryan sitting down with us and talking through the topic of peace as we enter this Advent season. If you haven't already, we just ask that you subscribe to the channel and would you like the video so that way we can reach more people with these conversations. And a new thing, uh, in the comments of this video, leave us questions. We want to know what you want us to talk about because we want these to be life-giving and add value to your life. But with all that said, enjoy today's conversation around the topic of peace. Yeah, it's funny when, <clears throat> it's not funny, but it's interesting when my grandma passed maybe three or four years ago, right before the holidays and stuff like that and I was talking with somebody and they said you know the grief that I'll experience is much like the game of Pong you remember Pong like where the ball like bounces yes. around and stuff old, like that. that yeah right Sorry. You, you, you probably know better than I do <laughs> <laughs> mm, but, but when <laughs> Pong what is this you speak of <laughs> ping pong so it's a game it's a video game on the Atari system <laughs> Atari what'd you call me <laughs> you know and the ball would like the ball would like bounce around and you got these paddles and right, you're trying right. to like trying to hit it back and forth right yeah well grief is much like when that ball hits the side it brings us like pain mm. you know it it stings it's like you pick up the phone you go to call them you can't because yeah. they're not there yeah you know and it hits you and it's not in your control you yeah, can't control right. when yeah. it comes you can't control when it yeah. goes either and he just helped me navigate like when that grief comes i can't control when it comes when it doesn't right. just, just because i'm not grieving doesn't mean i didn't care about right. them it just means that ball of grief is not hitting at the at this moment, mm -hmm. and he said he just said, he just gave me good great wisdom. He just said, "Grief is the process of getting your box to expand, mm -hmm. where the ball is still pinging around. It just hits less frequently, mm -hmm. and you can't control when it happens when it doesn't. So, yeah. grief isn't necessarily like not having peace. Right? It's not focusing on when that ball hits the wall, when that pain hits. You know, it's recognizing." It's okay. I miss them. I love them. Things are going to be different now. Yeah. And the Lord's going to help me in this. You know, and it, it was, it's just a very interesting process. And it was true. It took, it took a couple of years. You know, I was close with her, like all mm. this stuff. And that, that grief just hit a little bit less frequently. Yeah. And it would come at different times and different seasons. You know, when Christmas would come, I'd want to call her and I couldn't. Yeah. And it was okay to be sad. Yeah. But it was also be okay to to remember the good times that I had with her. Yeah, you know, and it's just interesting how that peace came, even in grief. Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's too. It's I think it's good that you say like, what where do your what does your focus go when you have those moments of like remembering? Because mm -hmm. um, I even think about I lost my dad when I was twenty one, and football season's always tough because I'm like I just want to pick up the phone and talk about how. Alabama deserved to be in the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, we're not going to talk about that. Totally sorry, sorry, sorry. to be. Um, and Good thing you're not a Florida State fan. Like, right? yes, thankfully. Yeah, <laughs> Who would be a Florida State fan? Uh, <laughs> so it's like, you know, I just want to pick up the phone and like celebrate or talk about how bad we played or, you know, all the things. And I, you know, I can't control when that comes, but rather than just like focusing on the loss, which is there, I can choose to think about, you know, all the good memories and how much fun that would be if we could still do that and, and still have a smile on my face, even though that pain comes in moments that I don't get to choose. When it does pop up, I can choose where my focus goes in those moments. I agree. That's what's in your control. What's in your control is what you focus on. Yeah. You know, I, th I think I mentioned it the other day, like <clears throat> we can't control the promise of peace. That's the Lord's to bring. Yeah. That's the Lord's to give. What we can focus on, what we can what is in our control is what we focus on. Yeah. What gets what gets the majority of our time? Does the problem get the majority of our time? Does our or does our focus on mm. either the memories or our time with the Lord or things like that? Does that get our time? Yeah. And it's interesting. We want peace so much that we focus on the problem and think that that's going to bring peace. Yeah. But it doesn't. Yeah. It usually just brings more fear and worry. Sure. Yeah. Or sadness. Well, I, what I like about that that pong analogy and pong, right? I'm, I'm saying <laughs> yeah, it, right? Yeah, pong, yeah. right? Atari. Yeah, so, pong. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about that that analogy is, you know, is is simply what you said. You can't you can't control it. But I think often when grief does come or the storm does come, you know, in those moments, I think we get really good. I, well, I'll say I'll speak for me. I get really good sure. at trying to run away from that moment. Oh yeah. To to yep. distance myself from the moment. And again, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I don't think the Lord wants us to necessarily sit in grief, but I think there's a 
there's a, a sitting in that moment mm. and leaving space for being present. Because I think a lot of times the danger is what we either go, we're not present, we're not present focused, yeah. where which is God's, that's where we experience God's presence is mm-hmm. in this moment that we either go to the past, yeah. you know, we go to longing for what was, yeah. or we go to the future and get anxious about what we can't control. And so I think there's, there's holiness. And actually when it does hit, leaving space to feel the feelings in that moment, because yeah. that's where God's presence will actually intersect that, yeah. and bring the pieces in the moment instead of, mm. you know, running away from that. Like, I can't, I can't feel that grief. I, I got to get away from it. And I think oftentimes for me, that's where I go is something comes and you can't control when the grief comes and the, the ball comes down and it hits and it's like, oh gosh, you know, and then you just, you want to run the other direction. But it's like, I think in those moments right there is where God actually brings the peace. Yeah, I agree. I think we run too too frequently from pain. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying like we need to run into pain. Right, like right. Bring, bring the pain. <laughs> <More> pain. <laughs> some of us, some of us, yeah, you know, some of us are yes. wired differently <laughs> than others. But I think you're right. You know, it's interesting. Like peace can only be experienced in the present. Mm. You know, yeah. it can't be experienced in the past or in the future, but only yeah. today. Have you experienced that before? Yeah, I mean, I you know one of the things I I shared on Sunday was I I think. For me, um, you know, it's it's funny. I, I kind of told the story of when what when God actually called us here to Tucson, and um, you know, something we were really praying into, and it's a big decision for us. But man, we really felt like the Lord spoke definitively, like this is where I want you, this is mm-hmm. where I'm planting you, and um, you know, and I and I I think we all kind of think, at least for me, I'm thinking like, man, when I'm when I'm moving in obedience, and I'm I feel like I'm in God's will specifically, yeah. I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be you know, there'll be no issues. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be amazing. And I think that's where I've experienced the greatest heartache and internal storms and even external storms were experienced after a step of obedience. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things Jesus, you know, definitively says is in this world, you will have trouble, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and so, you know, I kind of told about that story and I, yeah, I go back to those moments. I think we had probably the first couple of months we moved here to Tucson we had some of the, I, I mean, the toughest moments as a family, you know, just as my kids transitioning and, you know, not to mention COVID, <laughs> um, there was just so much stuff there, but it was some of the greatest trials that I faced, even as a dad, that I go back to those moments. And I, I have moments of regret, hmm. you know, of just the way I handled myself. And, and yeah, I, I, and I sit in those moments, even now I can sit back and if I'm not careful, um, I can go to the past and go, man, what regret do I have for what I did and did not do as a mm. dad in that moment? Where, And honestly, it's one of the things I talked about was, you know, the difference between making peace, because we're called to be peacemakers, and trying to keep the peace. Mm. And I think they're two different, complete. keep is all about what I can do to control the situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Peacemaking is, Lord, I need your presence. I'm going to seek your presence. And then in that, you will bring peace, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not external peace, but it's going to bring me internal peace, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, that for me, I go back to that moment and I go, man, (laughs) Lord, thank you. And it wasn't honestly, as a family, it wasn't until we, until we decided, man, we're going to, we're going to press into the Lord, uh, like we never has as a family, you know? And in that again, it didn't, we didn't see, it wasn't like a light switch. It wasn't like, man, we sought his presence and man, it was, it was, you know, the, the skies cleared and the rainbow. I mean, it was, I mean, we were still yeah. in the mix, but man, it, something happened, especially in Rachel and I to start and then in our kids as well. And so, and now we're experiencing a lot of that fruit from that season. So, you know, I heard, um, I don't, I, this is one of those things that maybe got cut out a little bit. I heard some, I heard somebody quote, I can't remember who it was, but they said, anxiety and fear only breeds more anxiety and fear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. peace and calm only breeds more peace and calm. And I think that's yeah. what happened with you is like as you and Rachel became more calm and peace and centered on what, what God had called you to, that's right. it just spread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you took the opposite approach, the fear, and the, if you be, became more anxious or more fearful or more right. panicked, that could have been what exactly. translated in your family as right. well. Yeah. What would you guys say to the person who... You know, they're trying to, they're trying to choose peace and, and they genuinely have this heart to believe God has peace for them, but it feels like life just is beating them down. They can't catch a break and they finally get their head above water 
and they feel like things are getting better uh, and then something else happens, how does somebody maintain uh, peace in, in those situations of, for a prolonged period of time, you know? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I'll, I guess I'll, I guess I'll, I'll give time, Rob time to think. He's trying to figure out Pong still. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say I've experienced that as yeah. well. Uh, I think that's a completely normal thing. Um, and I think, I think we're measuring, I think that person and myself, we're measuring peace the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And that peace means all the circumstances have to be right for me to experience peace. Okay. And I think that's, that's what the Bible wouldn't say is peace because the Bible does say like, in this world, you will have troubles. Yeah. You know, Paul's like, I've been beat, I've been whipped, I've been shipwrecked, I've been like all this stuff. But yet he can also still say, but I found how to be content in all circumstances, mm. you know? So how can you hold both in one hand? That means that means it's got to be peace can't be because good things happen to them. Yeah, You know, it can't be like external good things, promotions at work and checks in the mail and cars that don't break down and kids who are always obedient. You know, that's, that's, that's utopia. That's like, that's, that doesn't exist. Right. But I think peace is learning how to be comfortable with trusting God in, in those situations. And I think, I think that's why Jesus told us he had a gift for us, gift that of peace of mind and heart in that we can go through everything. And then even goes on to say in in John, by being anxious, how many of you can extend your life? How many, you know? So when these bad things do happen, will worrying extend your life because of that? Instead, focus on God. Put your mind on on God and all these things will be added to you. So I think, you know, to answer your question, from my opinion, I think that, the determination of like where peace comes from, it doesn't come from situations. Yeah. Peace does not come by good things happening to us. Yeah. It comes by knowing I can trust God. Yeah. I can put my, I can fix my mind on God. I can hold in my hands the reality of what's happening. Yeah. I'm not going to ignore all the bad things that are happening and all the, all the things that need to be changed, but it's not where my mind goes. Yeah. My mind goes to where I think, the Lord has for those. What scripture do you have for me, Lord? What do you yeah. have? What are you trying to say to me in this? What gift? You know, I think I like last week what pastor said, like, what gift is this situation right. giving me? Right. And I think it's a reframing of what peace looks like. Yeah. Let's go a little bit, a little bit deeper into that. Um, what are some practical things? And maybe Pastor Rob, you can kind of hit on this is what are some practical things we can do to fix our mind on God in those situations where, you know, it feels like, everything's pulling our circumstances are pulling our focus everywhere else, but how do we keep, how do we keep our focus on him in a really practical way? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I don't want to, I've got, (laughs) I've got some practical tips, but I would say, I don't think you can move beyond probably the greatest tip, which is being in God's word. I mean, you know, if, if you, it's like step one, it's like, you know, you can't step, skip step one. It's, it's (laughs) like, you know, getting to the gas station, like you can't just pump gas like into the, you know, on the ground, you actually have to open up, you know, (laughs) the gas cap (laughs) and put that, you know, know, like, so, so you can't skip that step. I mean, if, if you're not, if that's not a discipline in your life of, of renewing your mind with God's works, it's alive, then, you know, it's kind of a non-starter. You can't Mm. really go there. But I, I would say outside of that, um, you know, one of the things I talked about, and I think it's just a great practical step is, you know, um, you know, even through Next, um, which is, you know, uh, commercial for Next, if you haven't gone through Next, right? <laughs> we talk about it every week, right? Go to Next. But 1.0, we've got some great assessments where we get to discover uh, together how we're uniquely designed mm. um, and our personalities, our spiritual gifts. Um, and connected to that is actually how we uniquely connect with right. God. And um, so we do that through something, uh, it's, it's based on a book, it's called Sacred Pathways. And and there, you know, there's kind of nine types, you know, um, I'm kind of a guy, you can't fit me in a box, but you know, <laughs> shocking, I know. Right. But, um, but I think it's really helpful to at least begin the discovery process and going, okay, how do I, how do I best connect with God? Yeah. I kind of told, you know, the story on Sunday, I think for a lot of years as a, you know, I, was, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 17 and I spent a lot of time in church watching people really connect with God through worship. And it wasn't my experience. You know, it doesn't mean that I don't connect with him through worship. I think we're designed to, but I'm watching people having these deep, you know, encounters with the Lord. And I'm like, why isn't that me? And and through discovery, I'm like, I realized I'm an, I'm an intellectual. Like I, I actually love to connect 
learning more about who God is. Yeah. And so like reading a book that opens up, you know, something fresh and new that I didn't know about God really helps me connect with his presence. And so learning that about yourself, I think is so key because what you do is mm. you build a prescription on how you best connect with God. So, you know, it's, it's not that I can't connect with God through worship, but I know that intellectually, that's how I connect. That's how I'm wired. Yeah. And so, man, when I really need God's presence, when I'm when the storm hit, does hit, when the ball does hit me, and and you know, in Pong, or you know, when the thoughts start to come, or when disaster strikes and circumstances are not what I thought, and you know, you fill in the blanks, whatever you're at, I know that, man, that's how I connect with the Lord. Yeah. Like I need to go, like get in His Word. I need to go, man, read something new about Him. I need to do something that renews my mind, and that's you know, and connect with His presence. Right. So. I think, you know, for some people, they're they're naturalists. You know, they love, they see God in his creation, and they connect with God. And so, you know, if that's you and, and you, man, you really need, you know, peace that passes all in hand, shalom, shalom, then, man, go on a hike. Go get outside. Go be in his creation because that's how, that's how God actually designs yeah. you to connect with him. And so I think that, for me, that was just a real quick practical tip that for me over the years, it's recognizing that. Mm -hmm. And then making space, like this is how I'm gonna go connect with the Lord right now because I really need to be with Him. So, what is something? Um, <clears throat> we'll kind of set this up as like the last question. If there's anything that you wanted people to take away from yesterday, um, in each of your messages about peace, maybe it's something that was left out of the message or didn't make it into it, or it's just this big idea that you want people to walk away with uh, when it comes to peace in this Christmas season, because um, we're stepping into the Advent calendar, and you know, studies show this is the season where everyone's the most stressed. Right. The most anxiety filled, yeah. filled um, for a lot of people, the most grieving period of time because they're thinking about everyone who's not there and not the people who are. And what would you say to that person about peace as they walk into the season, maybe with some fear in their heart or in the back of their mind, they're thinking, you know, um, I'm getting all this stuff for my kids, but I really can't afford it. But I want them to have. And it's like all the stress that it comes with this season. Uh, what would you say to them about this biblical peace, this prince of peace that they have an opportunity to? to encounter with in the season. I'll maybe share what I feel the Lord's telling me to do this season. And maybe this yeah. is for, maybe this is for somebody else. Slow down. Oh, man. Yeah. Down. We, we go through so fast mm. this season. We go from Christmas party to Christmas mm -hmm. party, to work, mm -hmm. to shopping, to sports, to all this stuff. And we just go boom, 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 yeah. boom. And I, what I feel the Lord's telling me to do is just to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not go fast, especially around this season. What's funny is Advent was started by the early church to remind people to slow down <laughs> and don't miss the the pieces of Jesus that he wants to have for us. Peace, yeah. joy, love, and hope. Because we get so focused on Christmas mm. that we miss Jesus in it. You know, yeah. it sounds so cliche, like Jesus is the reason for the season, <laughs> you know? like. Yeah. But what if you were to slow down and find Jesus mm. during the season? Yeah. What if what if instead of focusing on the lack, you fo focus on what he did provide, mm. you know? Cuz I found the more I look at what I don't have, the the less I trust God to provide that. Yeah. But when I do focus on what the Lord has provided for us this year, the more I find like, oh my gosh, he's really blessed us in this. Yeah. And so I just think I I don't know if there's anybody out there thinking like the things are going too fast. It's in your control to slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you don't have to be at everything. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to always have a TV on, an iPad on, a phone on, all, all this kind of stuff. You know, I think yeah. it's funny. I think you were mentioning the other day, like in the first ten minutes. What was that? What yeah, was that so, stat? Uh, in the first ten minutes of waking up, it's something over ninety percent of Americans will check their phone within ten minutes of getting out of their bed. I would bet most people it's the first thing they look at. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Is this their alarm clock? So I wonder. I wonder if we all just took a day and didn't do that. Yeah. What if What if we let our phone charge in a different room? You know, I'm I'm feeling this like panic. Like, <laughs> but what if somebody needs yeah. to get a hold of me? Yeah. You know. But I wonder if we just took a day and did that. Like yeah. we all just, just one day and just see see what happens. What if we were more attentive to like what our kids needed in the morning? You yeah. know. Um, so I, I I think I would just encourage people slow down. Yeah, I think for me, I, I think, uh, I mean, that's that's honestly one of the first things that came to my head was the pace, but also, and it maybe maybe related in, in some ways to it is, um, you know, God's got a process. I think he 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 doesn't cause problems in, but he allows us to go through them because he's he cares more about 
your character and growing yeah. you and stretching you than he honestly than he cares about us being comfortable. And you know, he wants us to enjoy life. He's got a life that's abundant, of course. But you know, I, I would say, you know, I kind of always kind of this phrase, you know, and I heard it years ago is like, don't don't rush. The, the rinse cycle. I mean, we've mm. all done that in our lives. Like, you know, you yeah. pull out the laundry too fast out of the washer because you're wanting to speed it up and, and get like, let's mm -hmm. get the clothes dry. I need to get right. the clothes dry, you know, but there's a reason why the, the, the washer spins, mm. you know, it's, it gets the extra, you know, moisture out and, you know, you, you put clothes in there too early and you get them out and they're like, it's been an hour in the dryer house. It's not, you know, and, and, and our attempt to speed things up. And mm. I think we, we can also, you know, again, going back to that difference between peacemaking and peacekeeping, we yeah. think we we've got to rush. We could speed it up. Like I, I got to keep this. I got to I got to hold on. And it's almost like we get into this mentality of that there's not enough. I've got to I've got to hoard somehow this peace. You know, I've got to get it. And our God is you no know, not shorthanded. He's not he's not a God of lack. Yeah. And he, but he's a God of process. Yeah. And I think you know if 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 we would just again going back to the pace, if we would just slow down, and and focus on His presence, and if we can focus on His presence. It's mm -hmm. a promise that he is giving us that yeah. if we seek that that presence, we will have the the perfect peace, the, mm -hmm. the shalom, shalom peace, you know, that I think we're all all after. So Yeah, and something I just feel kinda of led to add as somebody who has a young a young family is the the biggest thing that steals our peace in most most times is our comparison to other people. Come on. So good. And mm -hmm. so I think especially in this Christmas time where if you have kids and young kids, you're like, you want them to have the best thing and you want them to have all this stuff. And, and sometimes you just can't do that all the time. And I think most of the time we get discouraged and we get, you know, ashamed or insecure. It, it's because we're comparing what we can give our kids to what they give their kids. And they might be 30 years down the road than us. It's like, right. why am I allowing that? Something that somebody else has to steal my peace. When in the season, I can be thankful for what we can do for our kids and what we can give our family, what memories we can make. And so I would just say, you know, don't allow Instagram and TikTok and all these things that you see that might or might not be real take peace from you when you have something in front of you you can be thankful for. Yeah. Um, and so I'd love to end today with Pastor Ryan. Can you just pray for people and peace over them uh, in this season of Advent and Christmas and the birth of Jesus? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Father, we're just so thankful that you you allowed Jesus to bring peace on earth. We just stand on your word. Uh, in Luke 2 that says, peace on earth and all those who are in your will. God, I pray for anybody who is uh, ex not experiencing this peace, I pray that you would visit them. God, that you would give a gift that you promised them, a peace that this world cannot give. And Father, I pray, uh, I pray uh, for deep breaths, God, long nights of sleep. God, I pray um, thoughts and minds that are fixed on you. And God, I pray that there would be peace in this season. And God, I'm even just reminded to uh, even pray for families. God, as sometimes families can um, not bring peace as around the holidays. God, I pray that your, your hand would be over families. And God, that there would be a unity that only you can bring. In Jesus' name, amen.